So the Old World box came out a couple of weeks ago and we've already done a huge review on it. The one model I'm super interested in this kit is the Bone Dragon and that's this guy right on the box and he's really, really cool. I'm super excited to make him up. But before I can talk about the newest model in this kit, we need to talk about some of the old ones. I've been a fan of skeletons for years. I've got a mixture of skeletons going through all their designs and I'm gonna talk about them today. So let's do it. It's, it's tabletop, tabletop time. time. This video is sponsored by Squarespace. So the controversial topic that's pretty much on everyone's mind when it comes to these old world boxes is the older models that come in it. If we dig a bit deeper, it says on the sprues that some of these miniatures were made in 1993. One of the other complaints is people paying modern prices for minis that were created over 30 years ago. For some, the nostalgia is real and they're just excited to get classic models. But I think majority were expecting newer models for such a high price tag. With mostly their only brand new model locked into a 500 $100 box of ancient skeletons. It's not a surprise the Bretonia box sold out almost instantly, but the Tomb Kings box is still available. So something I found that's super interesting is the types of sprues that you get in this kit. It's really interesting because some of the parts on this sprue remind me of like a pirate skeleton, right? Like they've got the medieval hats uh, in some of the poses, even their weapons are a lot of swords and axes. And then you've got this sprue, which is a bunch of Tomb King heads, uh, some whips, the shields as well, which is super important. It's just really interesting that they had to create this sprue, but then they had what looks like a pirate sprue and they've chucked them together when they could have just made new skeletons. Now, I don't know a lot about the Tomb Kings when it comes to their releases and the historical accurate dates, but I think I know someone who does. It's me, plagiaristic joke science Dave. I'm a bone doctor. I've been doing some digging and it seems to me that Games Workshop have been beating this dead horse for over 35 years. I did some research with receipts and found the origins of the models you can buy today. One of the first Games Workshop plastic kits ever made in 1989 was the Skeleton Army. And honestly, the box is extremely cool. For 1989, inside you can find these dead horses. The same ones you can buy today for almost $500. This skeleton horse was re-sprued and reused in almost a dozen kits over the next two decades. This this same goddamn horse. In fact, this stupid horse may be the most widely used Games Workshop sculpt ever made. The core skeletons have also fared fairly similarly, although these spring chickens are much younger dating from 1998. That's only 26 years ago. They first appeared in the Skeleton Warriors Regiment with these funky skull and crossbones shields, where they would live and be reboxed a couple of times. Ultimately, these diverged and they became Tomb King Skeletons, where they added a funky sprue of new shields. The very same skeletons you get today, for $500. They were eventually replaced in 2008 when the vampire counts got some cool skeletons, but they lived ever onwards in the Tomb King's range. And now they live ever onwards in your basement, in the box of minis that you didn't paint. I hope you've enjoyed that look at history. Now I'm actually gonna go ahead and build up one of these little horsemen just to kind of give a comparison of an old to new model so we can really see how much of a sin against nature these things are. I think it's really interesting that the Bretonians have gotten a really good launch. Their releases include some really cool miniatures like the battle standard bearer on foot and mounted, questing knight paladin with the great sword, the knights on foot, and some of my favorite miniatures from this range, the handmaiden of the lady, Lady Elise de Shard, and even a release of a never before seen 2008 sculpt. However, on the other side, the only new minis that the Tomb Kings got were the Tomb King himself, the Battle Standard Bearer, the Priest on the Bone Dragon, which I'm making today, and I'm absolutely going to butcher this, but Neck Cup Emissary of Cetera. Four single pose models versus a bundle of new characters, an entire new unit of awesome knights on foot. Tomb Kings got really not a whole lot. It's also a little sad they decided to include these really old sculpts when we know again Workshop can make better things. That being said, it is kind of a breeze to be able to do this in two parts and quickly assemble a couple of horses, unlike the more complex kits that they have today. But whether this is a good thing or not, I'm still undecided about. I really do like some of the complexity when it comes to minis. So this horsey is pretty much ready to go. Uh, so I'm gonna glue them together, spray them up, and then we'll come back and we're gonna paint him and see what he looks like. 
So with all that said and done, I think it's time I start building up one of the Tomb Kings models. And I'm gonna go for the Dragon. It's one of the new kits that come in the Tomb Kings box. And I think it's an awesome addition to this army. And don't get me wrong, they already had some really cool models like the Necro Sphinx. But again, I think that this is a really cool addition. Plus it doubles as a mount for your priest, which is also really cool. Comparing the skeletons that I had made before in a previous video to this Bone Dragon, it's basically night and day. The way that Games Workshop has evolved and changed up the way they create miniatures is definitely evident in this sprue. There's so much detail to be found here when you start to look at the pieces individually. You can also tell by the way you have to put this thing together. Certain pieces only fit with others and customization or kit bashing could be a bit tricky when you compare this to the skeletons I'd built before which were very bare bones and basic. Although one of the things I loved was the bit of customization it gave you. Those sprues were definitely dated. But there's a few things to consider here. When it comes to skeletons and to Warhammer Fantasy you have to build so many of these guys. So I'm not sure if Games Workshop just had a huge amount of skeletons that they wanted to get rid of and decided not to redesign them or to appeal to nostalgic fans. It's my hope that Old World does take off even as a niche game and they can come back and revisit these as a new edition later on. Nevertheless, if they do release these kits separately, you could build your own skeletons using whatever kit you wanted. But going back to the Bone Dragon, he was pretty easy to put together and I'm really happy with the final results. All right, so the Tomb King old skeletons are a classic and they were reboxed in 2003. That's a long time ago. And since then, Games Workshop has gone through many iterations and cultures of skeletons. These guys are for the vampire cats, realistically proportioned. The Tomb Kings are really looking like the old animated skeletons from, you know, Jason and the Argonauts, that movie. These skeletons released in 2008 have a very traditional medieval garb and are modeled with a very shambling gait. Very classic, simple, but solid design and a foundation for every skeleton kit going forwards. And then after that, we get things like Graveguard, a direct upgrade sprue to the existing skeletons. The Graveguard feature more ornate and Dracula themed motifs. Brass helmet wings and more adornment on their armor as befitting a more talented warriors, even in their undeath state. These models are a fantastic aesthetic and really build upon what was already there in the previous kit. They were called the Sepultural Guard, if I recall correctly, with seven completely unique and characterful skeletons, all featuring distinct personalities and war gear. And then we get, this was a Underworld's Warband. Amazing models, absolutely love them to death. And then let's call it a little bit of a rift in the design of skeletons, where we ended up with the Ossiak Bone Reapers. Love them or hate them, they have some pretty cool models. Particularly the characters, those are all fantastic, but I personally do not like the infantry whatsoever, both aesthetically and in terms of lore. Making elite troops all fused from the bones of multiple skeletons just doesn't do it for me. Especially when the end result just sort of looks like a skeletal gene steal. This guy with the axe, absolute 10 out of 10 banger model for me. But overall, it is definitely a stylistic advancement and a, a huge leap from here to here. And now we come to what was the evolution of the original Vampire Count skeletons into what is known as the Death Rattle Faction. And we were gifted with some beautiful models first shown off in the Cursed City box. Fantastic detail and fidelity in the sculpts, a real Turkish flair in the aesthetics. They look the most true to any models concept art I've ever seen. These are my favorite skeletons to date, but unfortunately I don't have any built to show off. What's really special to me is how much story and character there is to each one of these individual models. The unnatural stances and punctured breastplates showing off how that individual met their untimely end before they were raised into the army of undead. This is the peak of undead miniatures for me. Now, why am I not so happy about classic Tomb King skeletons making an appearance in a box set for an army in 2024? I think the problem is that Games Workshop has shown us what they can do. And then you hand them some old skeletons, it's got character, but it's very old. <laughs> and there's like 90 of these in the box. That's a loss. You see, the problem is that you see models like this and it inspires you to do something even higher. So I've got something a little special. I decided to do some bone rat. The character I wanted, the white king, was out of stock. I thought, oh, bollocks, I'll make my own. So I went ahead and created my little pirate captain. And I am so proud of this guy. He's just made using the old classic vampire count skeletons. And I just made him my own. This is completely inspired by what Games Workshop 
can do. That is my little spiel. I would love to hear if you have similar thoughts in the comments. Anyway, I'm going to hand back to Jen now. I have done prepping my model. He's all built and ready to go. Uh, he is so much bigger than I thought he was going to be. There's the dragon, the priest on top, then there's the canopy, and then he's got a bird thing that's casting magic. It's it's a whole model. Leave aside like a full day to build this thing. It is huge, but it is really, really pretty. Um, so I've got him outside and I'm going to go ahead and spray him up. I'm going to prime him black, uh, just using the Citadel Chaos Black. Then I'm going to prime the dragon in a khaki color, just so it's an easier base to work from. There is so much to paint on this model. I have so much work to do, so I have to get started. So let's start spraying. <laughs> Now I've mentioned a few times before that I love painting big models and this guy is no exception. In the previous models I had built for Tomb Kings, I had gone with a bone white spray and used a red underneath just to give it a little bit of color. This time I opted for a khaki color when it came to the dragon and left my other pieces black. I think that the under spraying method is really good if you're doing infantry or really basic models just to give it a bit of pop. But for this guy, he needs a lot of work and a lot of detail. So just starting off with a normal black base was perfect for me. When it comes to the painting scheme, I actually really Really like the Tomb King's original colors. So I'm gonna go ahead and follow what the guys have done on heavy metal. I did break down each of the sections individually, just making it a little bit easier for myself when it came to painting. A lot of my time and effort went into the priest who was sitting on top of the dragon. He had so much detail and so did his chariot as well. So I wanted to show a lot of attention there. The bone dragon is just a bone dragon. He doesn't really have a whole lot special going on. So I knew he could just be khaki with a couple of dry brushes up to that really nice bone white. I also, for some reason, decided that his magic should be a green color because I thought it worked really well. But I think it's actually supposed to be sand, not this green magic-y uh, weird bubbly stuff. But that's fine. I still think it's cool either way. It was really nice to come into 2024 and just sit back and paint up a big model. I really enjoyed getting lost in this process and it just felt like painting him was an absolute breeze. The design of this model is absolutely gorgeous. The way that the dragon is posed and able to fit on this rectangle base is really nice. He does pop over a little bit but overall he is on there pretty snug. Painting him was also really nice because all of the details were there. I knew exactly what I was painting and how I wanted it to look when with the older models it can be a little bit finicky and those mold lines are an absolute nightmare. I really like the attention to detail when it comes to any of the bone structures. I feel like just putting a dry brush on top of that just makes all of those little details pop up and it makes it super easy to paint even for a beginner. Overall I can happily say that I love this model. I think he's such a cool addition and I think he's going to be a really cool model for most people to paint up as well. But he's not 100% done yet. There's one last thing we've got to do and that's his base. But before I can show you more of my amazing paint job, I have something even more amazing to share with you guys and that's today's sponsor Squarespace. If you want to create your own stunning websites with simplicity and ease, Squarespace is just for you. We're super excited to bring to life the creation of Tabletop Times Law Library and it was an absolute breeze to build using Squarespace. They have an amazing range of templates to get you started on your website building journey. It's a fantastic option if you're new to web design and need a little bit of a helping hand. There's a ton of categories to choose from, so you're sure to find something that will fit your needs. When you're ready to take your website to the next level, Squarespace has their Fluid Engine. This feature allows you to create and move sections with a few simple clicks. It also allows you to add images, text, and even videos to your website. And if you're a creator who's looking to branch out and start selling their products, what better way than to start doing that online? They also have an integrated POS system, making it super easy to keep track of your inventory and your orders. So what are you waiting for? To get 10% off of your first website or domain, use our code TABLETOPTIME. A huge thank you to Squarespace for sponsoring this video, and we hope you guys enjoy the law library. For my Tomb Kings, I wanted to incorporate a sandy desert with adding in just that little touch of life. Here I'm using sand and a natural flock base to lay down the foundation of my scene. On top of that, I'm going to add some dead brambles and some tufts as well. And just with a little bit of dry brushing, my base looks cohesive and absolutely beautiful. Thank you all so much for watching today's video. I had so much fun painting up this Tomb King's Bone Dragon and I hope you like the results. If you like what you see and you'd like to support us, you can do so over on Patreon. There are awesome perks for joining up, so all of the links are down in the description below and you can go check it out for yourselves. A huge thank you to all of our Patreons, it's because of you guys this video was possible.
So here's my bone dragon all done and here is my little horseman that I made up earlier in the video. I also have my little skelly man down there as well and I really wanted to compare both of these side by side now. I've made both of them. Now there is something called the cheerleader effect where if you have something really cool the little guys don't matter as much and in this circumstance I have to say that it's really hard to put these two together. This Games Workshop model is absolutely stunning and there's so much detail but when it comes to this guy there's just something really rough looking about him. I do think he's nostalgic and charming in his own way but when you put the two together it kind of stands out like a sore thumb. Not to mention there are 40 of those skeleton warriors to paint so 40 guys next to this dude is gonna look well very interesting. I do hope that Games Workshop decides to release some of these kits separately because it would be a shame to miss out on this if you had to buy the $500 box if you didn't want the other minis. And I do hope this is the same with some of the other releases that they'll do. I'm really excited for what else so I'd hate to miss out on any of their models because I didn't like the old ones. With that all being said, let's head over to Murray and see what he thinks of my bone dragon. Hey, oh, that's so cool. Yeah, I like the green vulture. Yeah, so it's actually supposed to be sand. Mm. I did interpret it as sand. It's, so. <laughs> it's magic sand. Yeah. Yeah, that's it. Sand can come in different colors, right? That's cool. Oh, I got the glowing eyes. Yeah, that's so cool. This is so Tomb Kings. I love this. I think this is a clear indication of the potential that Tomb Kings can have. It's such a cool model and it's so flavorful as well. It's just a shame that they've put these really old ass skeletons in there. You sort of got the mentality that, you know, you'll be looking at this model on the battlefield. You don't care about the 40 to 170 little skeletons. But if you're a model collector and enthusiast, you want the best, right? Mm. And Games Workshop, they know they can do the best. So that's pretty much it for this video. Thank you so much for watching and a huge thank you to our sponsor, All Game Terrain. I made my awesome base using their products. So if you'd like to check out their stuff, links are down in the description below. And that's pretty much it. But I believe there is a Bretonia box that is calling your name. There is. Keep an eye out. It's coming soon. But until then, enjoy our other videos. See you later. Bye. This is cool. <laughs>